Hi, everyone. I'm Mercedes from Rocky Nook. Thanks so much for joining us today to hear Derek's story teach us about how to build a powerful digital darkroom in Apple Photos. Uh, just so you all know, just a few things in advance. Um, this webinar is live right now, but if you miss something or if you haven't tuned in, we'll have a replay for you tomorrow that will be sent directly to your email so you can watch anything you missed or something you want to hear more about uh, or if you you know, need to go over a section again, you'll have this at your uh, fingertips tomorrow to watch at your convenience. So as I said, today we have Derek Story with us. Derek is a professional photographer, writer, and online publisher based in Santa Rosa, California. He covers digital imaging at thedigitalstory.com. And for those who have a passion or a curiosity for film photography, be sure to visit his page, theanalogstory.com. Derek also maintains an online journal about photography and life at thenimblephotographer.com. Derek may look small on your screen when he joins us in just a second, but he's actually six foot seven. He's a very tall guy. He's also an avid cyclist who occasionally bikes into his office and runs most of his errands on his bike in town, which is pretty cool. Uh, Derek has published more than 20 video training titles on lynda.com. His trainings include Photos for OSX, Capture One Pro, Flickr, Dropbox, and live action titles on shooting high school senior portraits and travel to Cuba. So I know you all came here to listen to what Derek has to say. So without any further ado, I will let Derek take over from here. Derek, uh, go ahead and join us here. Hi. Hey, welcome. Hi. Hi. Happy to be here. Nice to have you. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, I think before we dig into uh, photos for Mac OS, and there's so much good stuff here, uh, I want to I want to tell you something that I want to compliment you on how smart you are. And uh, not just because you're attending this webinar or for those of you that have already bought the book, not just because you bought the book, although those are two very good things, I have to say. But the reason why I want to tell you how smart you are is because you have a curiosity about this application or you're willing to give this application a chance. And it's been very interesting for me uh, since photos came out in that the, you know, kind of the negative uh, reaction to it instantly on the, you know, because it follows in the wake of Aperture, which many people loved. Uh, many of you love Aperture, I'm sure, and, um, you know, iPhoto and all of that. But the truth of the matter is that this application, Photos uh, for Mac OS, is a very smart application. And it's very powerful, as I'm going to show you some aspects of it today. And, you know, my life as a photographer, my life as a writer, and, uh, you know, someone that works online, is in all honesty, I couldn't do my work without this application. Uh, I do use other apps as well, but in terms of uh, capturing something quickly uh, and then getting it online, getting it on Instagram uh, or getting it on Facebook, you know, for my audience, I have to publish many times a day. And I really couldn't do it uh, without this workflow. And uh, so I'm just happy that you're here and I get to, to share it with you and again, compliment you on your wisdom. All right, that being said, let's go ahead and let's start working in photos. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little screen sharing action here. This will just take a second. Hide your eyes, cause it'll be uh, weird just until I get over here. All righty. Here we are right here, and I have the screen share going on. All right, so uh, what we're looking at are, um, you know, a bunch of photos in the library here. And the first thing I wanted to point out before we actually get into building the digital darkroom is that uh, I have some organization going on. I have uh, folders and I have albums, uh, you know, all sorts of uh, things happening. And look, I have a smart album with uh, three star photos. And you may be going, three star photos, uh, Photos doesn't have a rating system. Well, those of you that uh, read the book, you know, you kind of know that there is a rating system with the latest version. Uh, if you implement, you know, what I uh, write about in the book, which is that you can rate images using the new filters command. And I just want to show you this really fast because this is one of the, the biggest beefs that people have uh, about this application. Uh, actually, let's see, we'll go, we'll go here. 
And I'm just going to go up here and I'm going to go to three stars. And boom, right away, we go from all those photos to three star photos. And then I'll turn it off. And there are my two star shots right there. And so this rating system is very easy to use. And it's, uh, again, it's something that I, I talk about in the book. I'll just go back to showing all photos here. And I'll just show you really quickly here, and then you can read up on it. So let's just come over here. I got three shots that I haven't rated at all. I'm just going to do Command K to uh, bring up the keywords. And I have my main keywords set up with just single strokes. And I just go to each image. We'll make this a two star. And I'll make this a two star. And then I'll make this one a three star right here. That's all there is to it. I just hit the keystroke on that. And now if I want to uh, filter those two stars or those three stars, I just come over here. There's my three star image. There are my two star images and there are all my photos. So yes, uh, I do filter in photos. I do do star ratings. I do it this way. Uh, it's very simple because, and here's the segue into uh, the part about developing your images, is that I only like to work on my best shots. In other words, if I shoot 50 photos, probably five or six of them are worthy of editing. I want to get to those five or six. I don't want to fool around with the other ones. I use this filtering system and work on my best shots. All righty. So. There we go. Let's talk about processing and raw processing. We're going to start kind of with the most basic thing, and uh, then we'll head out from there. And we have a processing both. Let's see here. We'll go to. Let's we'll go here. So we have a processing uh, at the basic level in this application. Uh, it has a raw processor built in. And uh, you can tell uh, by the little R or the little, uh, uh, or nothing at all, uh, if you have a raw image. Another way to do it, I'm just gonna do Command I right here. And uh, you can see right up here that we have a raw file. And uh, if it's a JPEG only, it will tell you if it's JPEG only. The most basic way to process a raw file in this application is just to hit the return key that brings us into processing mode right here. And again, you can check to make sure that you're working on a raw file and it'll say right here. And then you can just go ahead and use the basic controls and that processes the raw file. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm gonna take a little drink of water. However, as part of our digital dark room, we do have other options and I wanna show you those options right now. The first thing I'm gonna show you is an editing extension called Raw Power. Now, the way that I get to my editing extensions is right up here. And, uh, you know, these are third-party applications that, uh, that I either purchased or they're free, or sometimes they come with an app. Like for instance, when you buy Luminar 2018, the application, you get the editing extension with it as just part of it, and they just automatically load it for you. But the first one I want to show you is an application called Raw Power Editing Extension. And uh, so I'm just going to select it right there for my pop up. And again, if you're not sure how to install editing extensions and all that kind of stuff, we cover all that in the book, you know, all that step by step stuff. Now, what's interesting about Raw Power, and one of the reasons why I like to talk about it, is because this was designed by the same team that designed Aperture and the raw processing engine in Aperture. And so I think that's very noteworthy <laughs> because a lot of us really liked the way that Aperture processed raw files. And here we go, here are the same guys that were the Aperture guys right here creating this editing extension. And so we go right to raw processing and uh, you might recognize some Aperture users might recognize things like boost and uh, raw contrast and all that kind of stuff. So now we're just processing our file using raw power instead of the built-in processor that's in um, photos here. And if I wanted to, to make any adjustments in terms of detail, raw contrast, raw sharpen, uh, you know, uh, black point, 
all that kind of stuff is right here. But then we also can get into, you know, white balance. And for instance, I could maybe cool this off a bit if I wanted or warm it up just a hair. And we're at the raw level right now. We're working at the raw level. Uh, same thing on tone. I'm going to go to and do a little bit of recovery right here. Come down here and just recover a little bit of information. Then we have a uh, saturation and vibrance down here. And I don't want to do too much there. Do a little bit of contrast. We'll open it up just a little bit. We're going to take that contrast down just a hair. And then once I have processed this raw file, now I can hit the M key to see the before and after. I'm not technically image editing right now. I'm just taking a raw file and, uh, you know, calibrating it, getting it ready for image editing. Uh, now I can go ahead and save those changes. And here we are, we're right back in photos. And now I can continue to do whatever I want to do or what I normally would do in photos. So for instance, I can add a little brilliance, which is one of my favorite sliders in this application. It's got a great algorithm. If I wanted to, I could come down here and do a little vignetting. We'll soften that up a bit. Kind of bring our eye to the middle. Do a little bit of sharpening. Now this is uh, this is creative sharpening. This isn't input sharpening. We did the input sharpening uh, when we actually processed the raw file. Do a little definition, and uh, can hit the M key. There's our before and there's our after. We haven't really done much. All we've really done is process the raw file and fine tuned it a bit. Now one thing that I want to show you is I'm going to go back to I, and you notice that. Uh, that, you know, we still have uh, all of our basic information. Uh, we started uh, with a raw file here, but once we work on it, uh, it is a JPEG. It becomes a JPEG. So if I was to export this out, uh, it would export out as a JPEG. The interesting thing is, however, that the raw file always stays intact. In other words, it's always here in your photos. So even when you work on it or when you process it or you make changes to it as we did right here, then you can always revert to that raw file if you want. And uh, that button is right there. But I'm gonna go ahead and keep this as is right now. And so I'll just go ahead and click done. Okay, so there's one way to process a raw file. Another way that I wanna show you is with an application called Luminar. So let's see here, let's, let's go to a different set of images let's take this shot right here this is kind of oh wait i i think i want to use let's do this one yeah okay again let's just check here we go it's a dng which is a form of a raw file so all right we're great i'm going to go ahead and hit the return key this time I'm going to go, this is my favorite editing extension, by the way. I absolutely love, love, love uh, Luminar. I just think it's uh, fantastic. It's so smart. It's so modern. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and uh, open this file up in Luminar. Now, those of you, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Those of you that haven't used Luminar, I'll try to uh, tell you what I'm doing as I go. But the first thing that you might notice is that the file looks different already than it did uh, back in photos. And that's because Luminar automatically, and you see that little snap right there, I don't know if you caught it or not, uh, is also doing some optical corrections. It just does that for you. And uh, you know that it's processing it as a raw file, if right up here in this workspace, we're in the workspace, if it says raw develop. Now, if it only says develop, that means that Luminar has identified this as a JPEG. However, as a raw file, if it's a raw file and it identifies it as such, then you get raw develop, all right? So that's the way that works. Now, again, just like in raw power, we have basic you know, raw editing that we can do right here at the raw level. But we also have a few tabs. We have lens, 
so we can correct for lens distortion. You saw a little snap there when it did that, and a little bit for CA too. And then it also has transform tools at the raw level here. We don't need to do any of those right now. So I haven't really done anything. You know, I haven't really started working with any of the other tools in Luminar, but I've processed this raw file using Luminar's raw processing engine instead of Apple Photos. So you have different options and, you know, some shots might look better to you processed in photos. Some might look better uh, in raw power and some might look better in Luminar. It really uh, depends on the shot and it kind of depends on what you like. Now, once I've processed it, then I could start editing it and we're not gonna go too far down that road right now. However, I'll go a little ways down that road. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so there's our original and see how it fixed that distortion. You can kind of catch that. So basically all I've done is process the raw file, added a little accent AI, and I, you know, I have a decent image uh, without spending any time at all. Now, if I were to save these changes, I'll go ahead and save them. Then it processes the image and then we'll return to photos for Mac OS. One of the things that I absolutely love about the photos workflow is that now this image is not only uh, saved back to my Mac where I'm working right now, but it would be represented uh, in iPhoto. Uh, I mean, in um, photos for iOS and uh, on my iPhone, on my iPad, and any other Mac that I have. So these changes uh, will propagate uh, to every iCloud connected device that I have. And when I was talking earlier uh, at the top of this, saying that I depend on this workflow to publish quickly. Well, that's because, you know, I do this uh, really quickly on, let's say a laptop that I have in the field. It comes back to my iPhone. Uh, I have all these uh, edited images on my iPhone. And then if I need to publish something to Instagram or, or one of the other socials, uh, I can do it with something that's been processed nicely like this, and I don't have to just depend on the tools on my mobile device. Now, once I'm back here, uh, having processed it in Luminar, I can do all the other things that uh, I might want to do. And, you know, there are some terrific tools here. And in the book, I go over all of these tools. So, for instance, uh, let's say selective color. Let's say I wanted to work on the sky a bit. So I'm just going to click on blue. Then I'm going to click on the dropper here. I'll come over here. Just sample that. That's what we call it when we sample that. Now, this is say I in, you know increase that saturation a bit, and I pull the luminous down. Well, I'm really what I'm doing is just uh, creating the effect of a polarizing filter, right? By doing that, I could increase the range or decrease the range. I'm going to leave it right about there, and then I could play with the hue just a bit if I wanted to. If the that blue wasn't uh, quite right to me, so we'll just saturate it a bit more. Pull it down just a little bit more. All we're doing is really working with the blues in the shot. Now I'm going to hit the M key just to kind of show you because I've been mainly talking and not editing, right? <laughs> so, you know, there's where we started. Here's where we are right now without, you know, really doing, you know, anything uh, that uh, I tell you, even a non photographer could, you know, take care of uh, these simple things if they knew the steps. Right, you don't really have to to understand that much about image processing to get a very good result using these tools. So now, when I click done, like this, the image is uh, saved not only to this library that I'm working in now, but it'll also show up on all my other iCloud connected devices. So those are my favorite ways to raw process. Now, one of the things that people ask me about is well, what if I shoot RAW plus JPEG? You know, that's sort of confusing for me in uh, photos from Mac OS. And uh, I would say that you're right. <laughs> I would say that this isn't Apple's most elegant moment, the way they handle RAW plus JPEG. However, let's just review it so that at least, uh, you know, you can get what you want, um, maybe in spite of the software designers. So I'll go ahead and double click on this to, uh, 
knock it down to thumbnail size. And let's just come over to some RAW plus JPEGs. Now, these are perfect examples of shots where I would want to work on the RAW file uh, because, uh, you know, I want to make sure I get the tones right. I want to make sure I get the color right. And for instance, let's say that I, I like this shot here. But, um, you know, it needs some work. It's, uh, it's just not quite there yet. Now, this is a RAW plus JPEG pair. In other words, when I captured the image, I captured it both as a JPEG and a RAW file at the same time. The reason why I do that is that sometimes I want to apply an in-camera effect that only applies to the JPEG, but the RAW file is still the RAW file. Or sometimes I want to share, uh, you know, right away, and the JPEG is easier for that if I don't have time to process the RAW or if I don't want to process it on my phone. So at any rate, I don't want to process this image as a JPEG. You see that we got the little J up there. So I want to switch over to RAW. Easy to do. I'm just going to hit the return key. Just going to come over to image, and we're going to select use RAW as the original. And uh, usually I just sort of hang out for a second. Oh, we saw, see uh, levels changed right over here. There we go. Now, right away, I can tell you uh, on this particular image, this was captured with an Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. Pretty impressive that I know that alphabet soup, right? But it was. And in this case, the RAW files are prettier than the JPEG. Sometimes the JPEGs are prettier, but you don't have as much editing latitude with those JPEGs. RAW files have more information. So now I'm working with the RAW file, and now I can do you know, all those wonderful RAW things. So for instance, let's say that I want to go to Luminar again. Let's pick that up from my... So we'll let Luminar uh, take a whack at this. And uh, we'll wait a second for it to, to go ahead and see that file. It's a nice big file. That's one of the good things about the, the uh, EM1. And uh, we see that we have raw develop over here. Okay, that's uh, a very good sign, right? <laughs> that means uh, we're in business there. Uh, on the lens, we'll go ahead and... Now, this lens that I use, this is a 25 millimeter f1.2. It doesn't really have much distortion or CA, so um, probably doesn't do much good to click that. Uh, by the way, I can do things in most of the editing extensions like cropping. If I'm going, you know, it's just bugging me having that little bit of white over there. All right, we can just take care of that right now. All right, we come back here, and, and now I can do my raw processing. Now, and if I want, I can just go straight to look at this and go to boost and go. Oh, see, I don't really like the way that it's handling that. And this could be a case where you go, you know what? This isn't the right editing extension for this particular image. So then all you have to do is just cancel. And you come back, no harm done. You can see that we're back in photos now. Uh, everything was canceled out, and if I wanted to, then I could just go ahead and process this uh, with my uh, Photos app, um, or I could go ahead and go to Raw Power or use some of the other tools. And this is what I'm saying here: is that you know you have a lot of control over you know your images once you understand the tools that you have available to you. Okay, if I were to click done right now, let's just go ahead and crop it because you know that little thing's going to make me crazy. Oh, what did photos just do? It straightened also. You can see that right here. It automatically took care of that for me. Now, if I didn't like what it did, and sometimes I don't, most of the time I do, I could go ahead and move it back to zero, but I actually like what it did. So I'm just going to leave that right here. All right. And there we go. And I'll go ahead and click done. Now, we didn't really do any editing, but the fact that I was able to switch over to a RAW file, let the application process it, uh, improve the image you know, dramatically over what we were looking at earlier. And now anything that we do in the future is a RAW file. Uh, we can tell that by the R here. And we can also tell that we've done some image editing because we have that badge as well. All righty. So that's how you handle RAW plus JPEG pairs. I shoot RAW plus JPEG a lot, 
And uh, I wish I didn't have to do that one step. It'd be really nice if I could set up a preference uh, to say, hey, photos, when you bring in raw plus JPEG pairs, can you just show me the raw files? Uh, can you at least put them on top and then move the JPEGs behind? We don't have that yet. Maybe someday, <laughs> maybe someday. Okay, so let's let's move on to something else here. I think uh, we're going to kind of ease into image enhancement right now. We're just really kind of getting the most out of the shots that we've captured. I want to talk about optical corrections. Now, optical corrections is something that we didn't even have in, in Aperture, <laughs> but we have it available to us uh, in Photos for Mac OS. Let me show you how that works. And uh, let's see here. Let's, we'll pick another shot. I think I want to take, we will go, let's go here. Yeah, let's go with this shot here. All righty. So here we are. This is uh, Sonoma Coast. Uh, as um, Mercedes mentioned earlier, I live in Santa Rosa. I love going out to the coast. <laughs> I do. We have such a beautiful coastline here. Not so good for swimming. Southern California is where you want to go for that or the New Jersey Shore or somewhere like that. But for photography, we have a fantastic coast here. Uh, just don't get in the water. So this is a, a DNG right there. All righty. Let's play with optical correction. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the return key. Now I'm going to go to a different editing extension. This time we're going to go to DxO Optics Pro for photos. I love this extension. <laughs> it's such a cool. It's very simple. I mean, it only does like four things, but it does four things that that I really like. So when you bring a raw file into this editing extension, what it tries to do is identify both the camera and the lens combination that was used to capture it. And then it performs fixing lens distortion, CA, and all that kind of stuff. Now, you'll know if it's able to do that because your camera, in this case, a Pentax KP, and the lens will show up here. You actually get little pictures. <laughs> there you are. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry, everyone. Uh, I was just teaching away there, and uh, I got a phone call, actually, that, hey, I've dropped. So um, don't know what happened there. How do you want to pick up, Mercedes? Well, I'm not sure exactly where you were when, when we cut off. Um, why don't you pick up with the last kind of lesson you were in? Okay. Um, and if we've missed something, we can address it when we see the replay. Okay. Um, we can send everyone a little update then if there's something we totally skipped over. All right. All right. Well, I, I think I'm going to pick up with, uh, I'll pick up with portraits then. Uh, that's uh, kind of what I was digging into uh, when uh, I got the call that I had fallen off. So here we go. We'll go back to that right now. So I'll go ahead and do a screen share. Right. And everyone just to bear with that infinity loop for a second here. All right. So portraits. Well, you know, one of the things that I was uh, talking away about uh, quite passionately while I was the only one uh, listening is that there's this wonderful connection between uh, our iPhone and portrait mode and then uh, photos for Mac OS. And oh, the thing that I really like about that is that for those of us that shoot with iPhones that have portrait mode, uh, we can continue to you know refine what the, what the phone does itself. And I want to show you how that works because it's it's really quite good. So we have this image right here, and uh, we know that uh, it was captured in portrait mode because when we shoot it with an iPhone that has portrait mode, uh, we get the little banner right up here. So what we can do, however, is that we can open it up in Photos because via iCloud, uh, you know, it is shared and it's shared in its entirety. And let me just move, 
hide this for a second. So we can see this right here. Uh, it's um, the image is shared in portrait mode. So that means, for instance, I captured this in natural portrait mode right here. But however, if I want to use one of the other portrait modes, such as Studio Light, I can change that on the fly here in Photos for Mac OS. Now, this next one I don't like at all, Stage. <laughs> it has a hard time with hair. And then, of course, we have this one right here, which is a little harsh at the moment. So let's go back to natural. OK, so it brings it in in portrait mode. And then I can go ahead and do the things that I normally would do. Like, for instance, I want to crop this image a bit. So we'll go ahead and crop it. Now we'll go back to our adjust tools here in photos. And now you notice that uh, a number of these have been uh, set already. I didn't do that. It actually did that itself uh, because part of the magic of this algorithm, uh, this technique, is that it not only does it uh, give you the image uh, emulating a, a camera like a DSLR, but it also does uh, some basic image settings for you. So for instance, I'm looking at this, so I'm going, I don't really need to do uh, much else except I want to maybe add a vignette. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. Let's bring a vignette in right there. And uh, keep that radius, something like that. Soften it just a hair. And we can call it a day. Now, if I decided that I wanted this to uh, be a black and white using that technology, then I can do that as well and just come over here. But I would make some different corrections. Like, for instance, I would probably bring down the brilliance a bit. And in this case, I would probably pull down the highlights uh, a little bit. I would probably pull down the brightness just a bit, something like that. And uh, I think the contrast is a, is a bit too hot, so I could bring that down like that. And then let's see here. On levels, I could play with levels just a bit. Do something like this. Again, I'm leveraging the portrait mode. However, however, uh, I have the options to go to the different ones right here in Photos. So now I can go ahead and click Done. And I have that image right here. And if I go, I want to go back to color, that's not a problem at all. So Photos for Mac OS works very well for those of you that shoot with iPhone and use those different uh, you know, specialty modes that you have available to you. All right, so let's double click on this right here, just like that. Now, of course, in portrait mode, uh, we can just blow by uh, what the iPhone has done all together. And then we can just open it up in a different application. So for instance, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and open it up and we'll go to Luminar. Now you see that we have develop instead of raw develop. That's because we're bringing a JPEG in. When the iPhone captures in these specialty modes, it is a JPEG and not a raw file. And let's say that I wanted to add a little bit of effect. So let's add a little image radiance to this. We'll make that smooth, just like that. Add a little bit more. I'm going to bring the brightness down on it just a hair. This is one of the specialty filters in Luminar. And we'll go ahead and add another filter here. And we'll add Orton Effect also, which is another one of those cool shots. All right, and we'll add a little bit of Orton Effect. So now this would be something that we would have a hard time doing in photos. I'm going to overdo it just a bit so you can see the effect. And then we will come back here. We'll bring the highlights down just a bit. 
I'm going to do a little before and after curtain here. So there is our before, which is, you know, a, a very good shot considering it's captured with the iPhone. And there's our after. And so I like doing before and after because sometimes I go, oh, you know what? It also picked up a little too much, uh, too much color uh, when I added that. So then I'm going, okay, I may want to bring that back just a little bit. So I may want to use, for instance, that Orton effect. I may want to bring the saturation down just a bit here. There we go. So there's our before and there's our after. And as I said, it was a little heavy handed on this just to show you the effect, but you'd have a very difficult time uh, doing that in photos is very easy to do with, you know, the Luminar editing extension. So now I can go ahead and save those changes. And we're back in photos. Just hit the M key. And if I wanted to, I could continue working on it. So if I I wanted to do a little bit more video, and I, I forgot to do it in Luminar, then I could just go ahead and take care of that right here. We'll just soften the edge a bit. Now, this is an image that was captured with an iPhone, but yet it has very much uh, a studio portrait sort of feel to it. And so it's the combination of what uh, an iPhone can do with what photos can do, with what the editing extensions can do, that you know leads you to what I'd say is a, you know is a pretty nice shot here. If I showed this uh, to her, I think she'd probably be pretty happy. All right, so now I'll just go ahead and click done right here. All right. So uh, Mercedes, how much longer? I mean, we lost a, a few minutes. There was a dropping offline. Uh, how much further uh, before we take some questions? Should we take some questions now? Um, that's up to you. We can definitely do that. Yeah, let's do a little questions. And then if, uh, uh, I obviously have many more things I can show, but uh, I do want to get to some folks' questions first. So great. I'll come back. Um, so every, I, I know people probably have more questions. I have a few that I collected from earlier in the chat, but you know, feel free if you have other questions to submit those now and we'll get to those too. Um, let me see what I grabbed here. Okay, Patrick asked if you have, if there's anything in photos that mimics the edge blur tool in iPhoto. Uh, he, he really liked that tool and would like to use something similar. Uh, the edge blur too on iPhoto, you know, it's been so long since I looked at iPhoto. Uh, I don't exactly, I think that was one of the kind of the specialty filters. Excuse me. I got a little, let me take a drink of water here. <clears throat> so I would say that in photos itself, there's nothing that I know of. Uh, however, uh, I'm sure in one of the editing extensions and I'm guessing in Luminar, uh, you would probably be able to find something to emulate that effect. And uh, what I would do, uh, Patrick, is that, let's say in Luminar, you know, you create that same effect, excuse me, <clears throat> then I would save it as a preset in Luminar, and then that way you can always come back to it. Great. Uh, Ken is asking, how, how does photos handle HDR and stacks? So it doesn't uh, process HDR, and it you know, and it doesn't. Uh, so, for instance, if you bring in a stack of uh, three images that were uh, minus one, zero, plus one exposure, uh, you can't uh, you know build those in in photos itself. You have to use an editing extension such as uh, Aurora HDR uh, to do that or build them outside. So in other words, you would export the images out. But Photos does not have a, a built-in uh, HDR function. Now, if you capture with an iPhone, obviously it does uh, have a, an HDR function, but that's more uh, just to retain detail in the shadow and highlights. It's not really what we call true HDR. So you can't process uh, HDR in Photos. You would have to use uh, an outside editing extension. 
Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> what is the advantage of uh, Apple Photos over Lightroom or Photoshop? And is there anything that they cannot do in Apple or Lightroom that, or I'm sorry, in Lightroom or Photoshop that they can do in Apple Photos? Well, I mean, I think the, the main difference is when people ask me, especially about Lightroom, I, I'll show you a Photoshop trick here in a second. But I think especially when we talk about uh, photos in Lightroom, you know, it has to do with, with workflow, really. I mean, Lightroom has a, a more extensive tool set, you know, no doubt about it. Now, uh, photos uh, with editing extensions is you can create a custom tool set for sure. And, you know, that's that's really nice. But, you know, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, photos uh, in terms of iCloud sharing and your images propagating to other devices is easier to use. If you're in the Adobe ecosystem using uh, their cloud storage and so forth, then in that case, I would say Lightroom is a better choice. So you want to think about it uh, not as much in terms of tools, because I think in either app, you can pull together the tools that you need for the most part, you want to think about in terms of ecosystem and, and you know, where, where do you want to live? Now, something that came out in Photos 2, and this is kind of, uh, you know, a segue here, is that let's take a, a shot. Let's take this shot right here. Okay. One of the things that you can do is use the new edit with command that's in the, the latest version of Photos and edit images in Photoshop right here. Now, this is interesting. This is the one time where you don't go into edit mode in photos. So you're not in edit mode. Now, obviously, I'm choosing Photoshop. You could, I could choose a different application. And uh, what uh, photos will do is hand off the image to Photoshop. And now in Photoshop, I'll come over here. And uh, let's just say that uh, we'll just change it to black and white. Let's keep it simple. We'll just do this right. right here. Derek, for some reason, that's not showing up on our end. We're not seeing what you're doing. Um, you look a little frozen. <laughs> are you see? Are you seeing my my screen at all? We can see your screen, but it's frozen on that last portrait you showed us. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. All right. Um, Maybe you want to exit out of screen share and come back in. All right. Thank you. So let me just go ahead and close this in. See, Derek, are you still there? I think we might have lost you again. There you are. 